Hi, I'm Lisa Meese, and one of the topics that comes up a lot in my work as a professional cuddler is consent. And consent has gotten a lot of attention, uh, sort of in popular media, and there are a bunch of great analogies floating around the interwebs. And I like the analogies a lot, but one of the things that they often do that I disagree with is they talk about how easy and how simple consent is. And I think that's wrong. I think consent is difficult. I think it's challenging. I think it's complicated. And let me tell you why. Um, consent requires you to figure out how you feel about a sexual interaction or any other kind of interaction that's going to involve consent. And that can be hard to unpack, particularly when it comes to a sexual interaction. Uh, we've got a lot of cultural standards around that, and there is no one completely agreed upon right way to do this. So when I decide what kind of sexual interaction I want to have, I'm dealing with all of that cultural baggage. There is no choice that I can make that everybody's going to approve of. Uh, some people will think it is too much sexual activity. Other people will think it is not enough or it's not the right kind. People have a lot of opinions about this and they are not generally shy about sharing them. So that's part of the baggage of figuring out what you even want in the first place. And then when you're having sex with someone who isn't just yourself, you have to figure out what other people think and feel and want. And that can be really complicated because first of all, that other person has to figure it out first, right? And then you have to communicate it. And maybe it isn't just one other person who has thoughts or feelings about this. Um, maybe there is, maybe you both have an acquaintance who has a crush on that person and you know that. Do you want to have an interaction with them? This third person might have feelings about that. Maybe um, that people are going to judge you or that people think it's a good idea or a bad idea, right? So there's a lot to navigate and none of it's easy. Now, it's important just because it's difficult doesn't mean we get to say, oh, I'm just not going to worry about it, right? Driving a car is difficult. And if you don't figure out how to do it well, you're going to hurt somebody. Consent is very much the same way. Just because it's challenging, just because it's complicated, just because it's hard to figure out, doesn't mean you just get to say, oh, well, I'm just not going to worry about that. Let's let's be done with that already, right? But also let's not lie to people and say everyone gets this and that it's really easy and if you don't get it, you're dumb because none of those things are true. Um, so what do you do if you're struggling with this? Well, I have a couple of ideas. Um, one is get to know yourself. So what are some tools for that? Journaling, meditation, also maybe working with a therapist or a coach. I coach people around these kinds of issues. You can find that practice at holdingspacellc.com. You can talk to me about it. Professional cuddling is a great way to start to unpack some of these things. Now, to be clear, there's no sexual interaction in professional cuddling, but that actually uh, makes it more useful for unpacking this stuff rather than less useful because it gives you practice at respecting boundaries. And the boundaries are very, very clear. Um, so, you don't have to wonder, you know, if I just say the magic word, will it be sexual? No, it won't. Uh, that's not what this is. So you know that up front and it gives you the opportunity to practice kind of figuring out what you want. Maybe practice identifying what kind of touch feels good to you. Maybe just practice how it feels to hear no. Oops, there goes my alarm. Uh, right in the middle of the video. That's helpful. I'm going to keep going because uh, we're almost done and I feel like we've got most of the topics but not just diverge. Okay, back on topic. Professional cuddling helps you practice figuring out your own boundaries, practice respecting somebody else's, uh, and maybe dealing with the feelings that come up. So if someone comes to see me and they ask for a sexual interaction and I say no, they can talk to me all they want about how that makes them feel. And in fact, I highly encourage that. If this comes up, it's a thing I am gonna ask. How are you feeling about that? What stories are you telling in your head about that? Often when somebody hears a no around a sexual interaction, they tell all kinds of stories in their head. This means I'm going to die alone. This means nobody loves me. This means nobody wants me. This means I'm not physically attractive. It means none of those things. But let's unpack that and use some tools to figure it out so that when it sort of happens in the real world, you're better equipped to handle it, again, in a 
mindful way, in a confident way. So uh, if this is something you're interested in, I hope you'll come see me. And thanks for listening.